It is time. Uh, turn your books to page 119, lesson 3-14. Today we're talking about bar graphs. And we're going to use some rounding there. We're going to learn how to read and create bar graphs today. All right, page 119. Here we go. Bar graphs a large number. A bar graph uses vertical or horizontal bars to show data. The bars can go up and down the, the, with the information of what each bar stands for on the bottom and the amount on the left, or it can go left to right where the information about each bar is on the left and the amount um, is on the bottom. So the bar graph we have shows movie sales. Uh, let's look at the questions and answer those together. The bar graph shows four movies that have made a lot of money. About how much money did Star Fleet make? All right, we're going to look at the bar graph, find Starfleet, and Starfleet is in the orangish color. Okay, that bar goes a little bit above the $450 million mark. Okay, so what line is it closest to? It's closest to the $450 million mark, so we're going to say about $450 million. You can write out the whole number or write out the, the number with words. <clears throat> okay, see how we rounded there? We went to the closest line that it is to, and that's the about amount. That's how you round with a bar graph. The actual amount of money that one of these movies made was $399,804,539. Which movie was that? Now, rounding that, that's going to be really close to, obviously, $400 million. So which movie is really close to the $400 million line but just below it? That would be this one right here, Rodeo Clown. See how it's just below the $400 million mark? And $399 million is just below $400 million. So we would say Rodeo Clowns. Number three, John said superheroes brought in about 265 more than Voyage to Venus. Is he right? John said superheroes, which is the one in purple, brought in about $265 more than Voyage to Venus. Is that correct? Explain why. Pause your video and think about it. All right. The amount is about right when you look at the graph alone from 350 450, 550, and about 65 more than that. But the problem is, that's not just dollars. What we have here is the sale is in millions. If you added the word millions right here in the question, it would be correct. But he is not right. No, because you need that important millions word there. All right, let's look at the bottom of the page now. Now a double bar graph. We read it the same year, same way, but we have two bar graphs within the same year, and each bar is color-coded so that it works with the key. The green bars are the picnics, and the purple bar is the concert. And year one, those two bars are side by side to show them comparing the two. So you can, it's basically like putting two bar graphs onto one. A picnic a, um, attendance bar graph and a concert attendance bar graph but all on one bar graph so you can have all the information together. Read through 4, 5, and 6, answer the questions and then we'll talk about the answer. Pause the video and do 4, 5, and 6 now. Alright, let's talk about these and see how you did. Um, you should have answers down for 4, 5, and 6. If not, pause your video and finish and now we'll talk about them. Number 4 says every year a city has a carnival with, with an afternoon picnic and an evening concert. The graph shows the number of people attended each event during the past three years. Look at the attendance numbers. Do you see, see a pattern? Well, for the green, picnic goes up each year, and so does concert. So we see a pattern that attendance increases. What you put as an answer is okay. I'm just going to write attendance increase. That's what we see. An attendance increase each year for both picnics and concert. This year, year four, which is not on the graph, about 45,000 people attended the picnic. The mayor wants to know about how many chairs are needed for the concert. What will you tell him? Well, if we have, that would be an increase. If 
for the picnic attendance from 15 to 25 to 35, 45 would be at a constant increase. Well, each year it increased for the picnic about 10,000, and each year the concert increased by 20,000. So what's 20,000 more than 70,000, which is what our concert was last year? We would go 20,000 more than that, and we would say about 90,000 is what he should expect according to the picnic attendance. Okay? Think about the year after that. What would year five look like that? If the pattern continues, how many people can be expected to attend the picnic that year? And about how many people can be expected to attend the concert? Well, if the picnic increased by 10,000 every year, and last year was 45, we would expect 55,000 at the picnic, and 90, another 20, would be 110,000 for the concert. See how we can use the graph and the information to predict what patterns are there? doesn't mean it's always going to be right, but we can make a prediction based on information that we have. All right, turn the page now to page 120. Now you're going to work on making a bar graph. On the top of page 120, they give you the oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic at the bottom. Down here, I'll underline those in red. And then we have the square miles on the left on this side. And you can see that each, every other line represents 10 million square miles. What does that mean for each line in between? Each individual line would be 5 million. So we'd go 5 million, 10 million, 15 million, 20 million as we climb up each line on the, on the graph. Okay. Now you've got all over here on the side, circle it over here in blue, <clears throat> you have how many square miles each ocean covers. So we're going to graph this. I'm going to do the Pacific Ocean with you. And then you can do the other three oceans on your own. So the Pacific Ocean has 64,200,000 square miles. Now if I'm rounding that for the graph, I would round that to, it's just below 65. Because I have graph lines at 65, we're not going to do true rounding and go all the way down to 60. What line would it be closest to? It would be the 64 million. Well, the 60, or I'm sorry, the 65 million line. The 65 million line is this line right there. All right, I'm trying to make it a little bolder and blue right there for you. And then I just complete the bar by going down to the bottom, going down to the bottom. I could fill in if I wanted to, but I don't have to. So about 65 million, if I'm being really technical and making this accurate, I try to get that line just below the black line, like I just did by erasing the top part of it. So it shows it's not quite 65 million, but really close. Okay, go ahead and create bars for the Atlantic, Indian, Arctic Ocean. Pause your video and do that, and I'll put the answers up for you in a moment. All right, here are your answers. You look at the Atlantic Ocean. The bar is just below the 35 million square miles line. Um, the Indian Ocean is just below the 30 million square miles line, and the Arctic Ocean is just over the 5 million square miles line. All right, your bar should actually look like that. Now, I want you to look down at the bottom of the page. Bottom of the page, now you have to fill in some information. You've got the computer games. It says, well, let's read number eight first. A big software company wants to use a bar graph to show the number of computer games that were sold this year. Use the information in the table to make your graph. This time, you'll need to decide on a scale. Now, the scale is the numbers up the left side. We need to look at the numbers. Again, I'll circle the information over here. Left computer games sold this year. We have numbers of 453,000, 741,000, 318,000, 608,000, and 97,000. We need numbers in increments that show at least 100,000. And if we do that, we count how many double lines we have here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That would take us up to 800,000 if we did every one of those at 100,000, and that's large enough for our graph. So we want this to be, on the side, this number to be 100,000. Okay, and then the next one up would be 200,000, and so on, all the way up to 800,000. Go ahead and label your side like that. That means the lines in between are going to be 50,000. Once we get the lines set, then you can label and um, put your bars in. So I'm um, pause your video, finish your scale, put in your bars, and then play your video, and I'll put the answers up for you. Begin. All right, and this is about what your bar graph should look like. Again, don't be so worried about getting them exactly as long as they're in that range between the two lines that they're supposed to be or really close to the one line they're supposed to be.
All right. All right. I think you are ready. Um, it is time now to look at what you're going to do for your homework. Your homework is going to be very typical homework in remembering. Three dash fourteen. Okay, you're gonna do all of it. Now you're gonna be on homework page. Um, you will be reading a bar graph on your homework page, but it's gonna be a sideways bar graph. So make sure the bars are going from left to right. So make sure you're reading it properly. And then you'll be also creating a bar graph like we did on the last page there. <clears throat> and then you'll be just doing some review on the remembering page. All right. Make sure you get all your homework done. All right, let's get started. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do 14. Do your homework. Do your homework.